My name is Magnus Danielson. Um, I have been working with Francois Benon and Enrico, they're sitting right up here, um, on the PDEV analysis or parabolic variance, parabolic deviation. And um, the, just to give a quick uh, recovery, this is relatively new stuff compared to the 50 years we had with Allen variance. Um, the parabolic variance uses the linear regression least square method for the frequency estimation that you then toss into the Allen variance analysis. Um, the parabolic omega, big omega shape, is what you can see here, is really the weighing of the frequency values. The, 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 par the li linear regression least square provides a filter, a measurement filter. It reduces the bandwidth similar to what we do in the modified, but here we, we get an additional benefit. And that's what's covered in the papers by Enrico and Francois in a lovely way. And however, the one thing that was troubling them, and also me, was lack of estimation. The estimator provided didn't provide means of estimation. That is a big problem, because the, the reason you do this is to fight the white face noise. And to do that, you use a lot of samples. But since the estimator required you to revisit all those samples and calculate again in order to measure for a different tau, that meant that this required a lot of memory and a lot of computation. And that, so that's impractical. So that's motivating the work. So I essentially did it from, from the top, I did uh, the least square. You do it typically, you have a linear model. Uh, you use the standard linear algebra to, to resolve it. Then realizing that you get these typical large matrices. However, realizing that we, ha we do a time series, we sample our, uh, with, with a fixed tau, that's predictable. So we can make a model for it, and therefore we have the system model A here, which is just a linear uh, you have weighing of one, and then you have the weighing of, of uh, the, the sample number. And then we put our sample into X. This is just the trivial stuff. Then if we realize that this actually turns out to be a number of sums. And you can actually see here that um, the, the, the first part here is really a sum over fixed numbers. And we, so we can do a lot of reduction here. We, the, the second part is really where our measurements come in. So we, we rename those for C and D for the moment. And then look on the other part. We can do the sum, sort them out. This is now in closed form. Um, we can then solve this and out pops out two very simple equations using the values of C and D. Now, this is just linear algebra. But the, uh, this is the trivial stuff. The tr important thing is now that when we go further, we get, continue to work only with the C and D values. And here is how we uh, do the parabolic variance estimator, tossing it into, just following the, the lead from Enrico and Francois. So this is a relatively trivial formula still. We, ne we need our tau zero, which is the distance we take from between the samples, we have the number of samples, we have the C and D values, and we can solve it. However, if we now go back to the sums, we can actually break these sums into smaller sums. And this is what we do here. Consider that we have a se sequence with two blocks of data. The, the sum for uh, the, the C value is really just the sum over the sequence. And that's trivial to extend. So we can then actually take, if we have the, from the first block C and second blocks, the C2, we can add them together, we get the C for the full block. Similarly, but slightly different, is that we do this also for the D1, which is where you have scaled the samples with your linear ramp. Now we then can articulate this as summing it for the D1, D2 plus an offset value 
because we have started off from, from zero again for the ramp. So we need to add that, but we have that value, uh, the constant value from the C block. So we simply multiply C2 and N1 and add that up. So this shows you how you can take two blocks. These blocks do not have to be the same type, size. Um, so you can use this as part of an induction proof for the case where you have a number of blocks, which is what I do here. I have already blocks with N1 samples. I have N2 such consecutive blocks. I can then, using these formulas, decimate those blocks to larger blocks. Now, this is all of a sudden a very handy tool because we can do, using this, we can, you, we can acc accumulate data, quick rates, in fixed blocks. We can then combine these data together to larger blocks of any multiple we want without creating a colorization of the data. We still achieve the same least square properties because we do not evaluate them. We only provide the sums and only later we use the formulas for uh, phase, for the frequency or parabolic variance. And just to go back to show, this is the nice graph that Francois did, which is a graphical representation of how we take the two ramps, shift it up, to combine it into a long linear ramp. So that's the magic between the, the D ones. Now, going back to the properties, we have now accumulation of N samples into C and D pair. That's memory efficient because now we save two values rather than N values. Of course, we need to, we have a log two property also to rem, rem, have the numerical precision, but that's a trivial thing. Now, as we do decimation for multiple cases, it's pro processing efficient because the processing we did in the decimation means we don't need to revisit all those samples. So if we start off with decimating one million samples, that's a calculation we never have to do again. We then only need to combine it. Also, you can hear, do hierarchical decimation that's suitable for parabolic variance log-log plot because then you could combine in 10 for a number of, and, and then reuse the calculations. So then you have starting to go towards n log n in precision. You can use that also in hardware. So you can save a lot of processing that way. Now, it's important to understand that this, this decimation method allows us to maintain the least square properties. And this is really important. If you start off with a least square thing, like if you take a standard counter doing linear regression and then just try to average their val the output values, you will not get the same statistical properties as you do here. You will get a colorization and that will shift depending on the tau. Here we maintain the properties according to the papers published by Enrico and Francois. Also, it's interesting to note that the same decimation creating the, N, the, the C and D values with N samples, we can use to do phase, frequency, and parabolic variances. We don't have to decide. We don't have to set up the hardware side to, for a particular measurement. They will provide the, uh, the proper per characteristics for all those things. Also, the accumulation is very simple. This is, you can do very fast accumulation in FPGAs and simple like that. It's really, really inexpensive in today's technology. So allowing it to do million samples per second or more, I mean, that's more about how fast can you get your samples. The, it, the FPGA will actually yawn at this rate. Anyway, so, so it, now if you take a look on the hardware and software side, because it's interesting to see how it actually affects things. Now, the counter accumulates N1 sample that you decide into, with a known tau zero, into C and D values. Now, the counter delivers 
these values to the post-processing. So you can decide what's a suitable rate. If you want it one second or every 10 seconds or 10 times a second, that's, that's up to you. But you set the values and you produce it. The software then further decimates these blocks to suitable lengths. It can do hierarchical decimation if that's what you want. And the software then um, can then also interleave. You can do interleaving processing, of course. As you have the, you, you don't do interleaving in the thing you deliver from the hardware, but you can then do it for the longer tau stuff. That gives you the improved um, uh, degrees of freedom that you, you want to have. Now, the software then, although the transformation into phase frequency and parabolic, just trivial stuff. You don't let the hardware do that. Because as soon as you do that, you cannot decimate it further. You want the, the pure C and D values um, to be in able to extend it properly. Now, the software is able to do multiple tiles. So, if you do, if you try to use a, such a counter today, you only get the tau you get. Now we can do multiple tiles without colorization. And um, you also, another thing is, you can do incremental updates. Because you, you just accumulate these C and D values, then you get a little more data. It's trivial to calculate the new updates. So you can do the real-time monitoring stuff, which is really lovely, such as provided by the time lab that John Miles does, which is a good teaching tool as well, because you see how things flap when you have few samples. So this is just to show how we can do a little more modernized way of processing data, and I hope it was enjoyable. Questions?